Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm doing my June favorites. And normally this time of year, I do my mid-year favorites. And I decided just to do my regular monthly favorites this time around because I wanted to show you new products that I've been loving. And when I was going through my list for my mid-year favorites, it's basically all my recent videos that I filmed, my top three. I also shared five brands, five faves. So those videos, we're sharing literally all my mid-year favorites and I didn't want to be repetitive by doing a mid-year favorites this year. So we're just doing our monthly favorites. That means I'm gonna show you new stuff as well as books at the end of this video in case you're curious as to see what I'm reading. I hope you guys enjoy this video. Be sure to give it a big thumbs up if you do. Don't forget to subscribe before you leave. I would love for you to join the family. Hit the bell if you wanna be notified of my next video and I will see you guys. Uh, I'm already end, ending the video. See ya. That was uh, my June favorites. I'm so used to that as my outro. <laughs> Worst video ever. And let's hop right into this month's favorites. We're off to a good start. The first product I wanted to talk about are some favorite brushes. I know I mentioned last month I was really loving the BK Beauty brushes, specifically the 101 foundation brush. And I just wanted to go over in this video more of the brushes that I have absolutely been loving and just show you some of my all time favorite brushes because it has been a while and I always get questions about brushes in videos and now is the time because these are my favorite brushes. These are complexion brushes right now, but I can do eye brushes in case you're curious. But really what stood out to me right now are the complexion brushes from BKB. I wanted to show you kind of my dupes for them for some of my higher end brushes that I've also been using and loving, but maybe you can find similar options in the BK Beauty brushes. So all these are still wet because I washed them the other day and they're still drying all my brushes. It was that day, which I dread. <laughs> But they're done, thankfully. I couldn't use them today though. So this is the BK Beauty brush. This is the 105 brush. Still need to clean my handles of these. I usually just go over them with a makeup wipe or a baby wipe, in case you're curious. Not only do I clean the bristles, but I also clean the handles when I clean my brushes, but clearly not yet, because they're not dry. I wanted to show you in comparison to one of my favorite brushes, which is this It Cosmetics brush. It's their big powder brush. I obviously love this brush, but sometimes it can be too big. I bought it for that reason because it's huge and you can get your face done super quick. But sometimes I want something a little bit smaller and you can see the kinds of brushes that I really like and BK Beauty does it. Just that gradient of bristles. Those are always my favorite kind of brushes. We have that in my Hourglass brush, in my It Cosmetics, another It Cosmetics and BK Beauty does that style. So that's why I wanted to go over them in case you're curious. Of my thoughts on the BK Beauty brushes, I really love them and think you guys will too. So one of my favorites is the 105 brush. Use it just like I do my It Cosmetics brush. I showed you guys my Hourglass brush, which I absolutely love. And there's a couple brushes I use in place of this one, specifically my BK Beauty 108 brush. And I just use that for more precision powder. This is kind of an all over brush and it does fan out more. It's just a little bit wet right now. All these brushes are, but this is the 108 from BK Beauty. If you want something for powder underneath the eyes, I also use it for highlight. And then these two brushes specifically, I don't have any real dupes for these in my collection. I've just been using them because I love them. And this is the 103 brush, which I use for powder. It's the perfect size and density for applying powder lightly on the skin. And then the 107 brush, which I use for blush. And this is the perfect size for blush too. So I really love the sizes, the bristles, and the density of the BK Beauty brushes. So that's why they're a top favorite. And then I just wanted to quickly show you again the 101 foundation brush, which I've been loving because it's replaced my old Makeup Geek brushes which have that same kind of bristle design. So clearly I have a favorite type of brush that I always reach for and Makeup Geek no longer makes those. And every time I'd use one of those foundation brushes in a video, you guys would ask me what I'm using. And unfortunately I couldn't ever link the brush for you guys to purchase. So the 101 is definitely different from the Makeup Geek one in terms of the shape, but it's better honestly, because it has that slant to it. And I find it really does a good job at buffing out your foundation, placing it on the face, getting into all the curves of your face. It's nice and big, so it gets the job done fast. I personally really love brushes for applying foundation. 
I've occasionally gotten into beauty blenders for foundation application, but I much prefer to go in with a brush first than go over with a sponge. That's just kind of how I do it. And then not from BK Beauty, but another brush <laughs> that I've been loving this month is the one from Makeup by Mario, and it's the F1 brush. Looks like this, and it is very similar to my It Cosmetics brush, which you guys know I use all the time for complexion. It has the foundation and the concealer brush, just like It Cosmetics, but this one has a bit of a slant to it, if you can see that. So this is good for the contours of your face again, and Makeup by Mario said when he made this brush, he made it after his favorite brush, which I'm assuming was this one, and just made it better. So I really like it. I think both are great. If you're looking for a great dual-ended brush just for quick foundation concealer application, that's why I love dual-ended brushes for me personally because it gets the job done quickly which I love for a daily application. I know people have issue with storing them which I was the same way when I used to store my brushes like this but now I just store my brushes in a drawer laying down and I personally see the use in a dual ended brush and that's one thing I would love to see BK Beauty make in the future is some dual ended brushes like the ones that I love. Then I really got back into using this Rare Beauty lip balm. I purchased this a while ago and it's called their dewy lip balm and truly it is a dewy balm it has a good amount of pigment and i love this color it's kind of this pinky coral color brings me back to my blogging days with mac jazz and i go through stages of this color i'll always love it but especially in the summer when i have a tan I just absolutely love this color for me. This is like my perfect everyday sort of color. It has that nourishing balm formula. I love the packaging, how it's flat and you can just set it down and it doesn't roll away. So I can keep this on my vanity or in a drawer and it's not going anywhere. <laughs> so I really love the packaging of this. I think it's super unique and I love the color. Formula is great, hydrating, beautiful pigmentation to a balm. So if you're looking for some pigmentation, a color like this, which is absolutely gorgeous, perfect for summer, recommend this rare beauty lip balm and I don't think I said the color it's in the color praise there you go I will link everything down below for you guys though in the order that I talk about them that's how I always do my videos it's always in the order I talk about it so I hope you guys appreciate that because I always go through my videos and make sure I'm doing it in that way so it's easy to find in case you're looking for a product it's always going to be in the order I talk about things and then one of my standout makeup products from the sculpt collection that makeup by Mario did was his cream blushes. And I'm a big fan of cream blush, as I'm sure a lot of you are at the moment. It's really popular. And I end up picking up the Soft Pop Blush Stick in Pale Petal from Makeup by Mario. I wore this in my last video, so you can see that in my trying new makeup. And this is what the color looks like. It is so beautiful on the skin. I love the formula of this too, because it is a very dewy blush. Easy to blend out works with the other creams in his collection. However, I do not like the brush that's on the end of this because if you watch, you know what? I'm just gonna send you to that video. So if you haven't watched it yet, you can go see what these brushes do to my complexion <laughs> because I don't wanna go into detail about it here, but yeah, it wasn't good for me. <laughs> so I'm not a fan of the brush on it. So I personally won't be using that again, but I don't think it takes away from the blush. I would still absolutely recommend this blush formula. It's really nice, easy to wear, and it looks very natural on the skin. It just looks like my skin with color, but it blends out so beautifully and works with all my complexion products. So I'm so happy with this formula, and it was my favorite of the bunch of the actual makeup products that Makeup by Mario just launched, with obviously the brush. I love the brush. Like that's my number one probably, but for the makeup, <laughs> it would have to be the cream blush sticks. I talked about this palette in my top three palettes. It's the new one from Patrick Ta, and I obviously love it this month since it made it into my top three. This is me in a palette. You guys know my makeup preferences, and just having the perfect kind of neutral palette, leaning warm, but more so neutral with various textures to play around with, it really works for me, plus I can use those cream products as eyeliners, because you guys know I don't often use liquid liner. Right now I'm able to do it because it's magnetic liner. Otherwise I can't use regular liner with lashes because I get super puffy eyes. 
But I love this because I can do my smoky wing liner, which I love to do all the time. It has these beautiful topper shades with the glitters, the metallics, beautiful matte shades in here. Like it is the perfect palette for me. I've been using this on the daily. Sometimes I use this as a one and done palette because often I don't have a one and done sort of palette I reach for. This one, I'll throw some glitter on my lid, put a matte in the crease, just do a smoky wing with one of the shades. Like this is it for me, perfect daily palette. And then I also recently picked up some more Glow Recipe products in my Sephora haul video, my recent one. And I ended up getting the Hyaluronic Serum and I also got the Mist from Glow Recipe. And I've heard great things about these two products, but I used the other things before I went with these two products because they didn't have them in little mini sizes to try. And I like to try mini sizes for skincare specifically first before I invest in the full size. So I've really been loving Hyaluronic Serum. I think it plays beautifully with the other Glow Recipe products that I've been using and loving. Super cute packaging. I love that everything's glass. I just really love the aesthetic and the whole messaging behind Glow Recipe and how it's good for sensitive skin <laughs> like myself. So it's really been effective for me. And then I also fell in love with this Watermelon Glow Ultra Fine Mist. And this definitely adds glow to your skin, like beautiful, beautiful glow. So I will add this to my no makeup makeup days just to really amp it up and give it that glow. If I'm going to the pool, spray some of this on. If I need to rehydrate my face, I can use it as skincare in the morning, just spray it on before makeup. I love it. I know why so many people hype this up. It's so good. <laughs> it's one of those ones that I'll definitely keep in my makeup collection forever at this point as long as they keep making it. This is the only one I need next to my Charlotte Tilbury spray because that's more long wearing. This adds glow and just juice to the skin and it's so so beautiful. If you've not tried this before like it is gorgeous on your skin. Then I wanted to talk about what self tanner I've been wearing recently because I've been getting a lot of questions about my tan and this is from Sosu, Suzanne Jackson. This is her Dripping Gold Luxury Tan, and it's an ultra dark mousse. I've heard of this tan for a while. My friend Stephanie recommended I try it. She said it was the darkest tan she's ever tried, and that is true for me too. This goes on dark. So if you're looking for a really dark tan for the summer, this is pretty close to how I naturally tan. I still naturally tan a little bit darker than this but for me I have a more reddish undertone and this matches me quite well in terms of how it looks next to my natural tan so I really like this for summertime I wouldn't use this one so much for winter so I wanted to say that here because I know a lot of people wanted an update on this tan because I showed it on my IG stories and this is more of a drying tan on me personally. So a lot of the times mousses can be quite drying. Some are worse than others for me. This one does give me that kind of scaly skin after a few days, which is unfortunate. But for me, since I use this in the summer, it's nicer for my skin because my skin is more hydrated. In the winter, I'd more so use my Bondi Sands oil, but I've noticed if I kind of layer the two and do the oil, this works even better for my skin. So the types of tanners that I use with this, I kind of use it as a mixer. I don't use it solely on its own, but I get it to last when I use my Bondi Sands oil, which I can usually only use that in the winter time because my skin is so dry for mousses. But in the summer, this is what I've been currently wearing. I'm almost done it actually and I just wanted to give you guys a little update on it. I do like it. I still think it could be better, but I do think it's worth a try if you do self tan in like the color that I've currently been having for my videos. I think you should definitely check it out. Since I cut my hair and now it's a little bit shorter, I've been able to really play up my hair texture more. So I do have not pin straight hair. When it's long, it kind of weighs down the waves in my hair, but when my hair is shorter, I'm actually able to get kind of that wave back to my hair, which is really nice. And I love this kind of style because it's super easy to do for me. It looks beachy. I love it, just natural looking waves. I do crimp a few pieces with one of those waver irons. I can link mine down below in case you're curious. It's just one from Amazon. But to play up the wave even more, I love this spray from Kristen S. I'm a huge fan of her products. If you've been following my channel, it's an affordable line you can get at Target 
Ulta, I think, in the U.S. too, and you can only get this on well.c if you're in Canada, and that's where I got mine. So this is the Soft Shine Beach Wave Spray. It's for all hair types, non-drying, strand softening, shine enhancing, beach inspired waves. Love the packaging and aesthetic of Kristen S. Love the smell of her products. I think it's one of those things that I wouldn't go all out by all her products. Make sure you like the smell first because it's in most, but she does carry some fragrance free options. But that's what I used in my hair just to give it that natural beachy kind of wave. It doesn't really give texture. It really softens your hair and makes it shiny, like super, super shiny to the point where it almost gives that wet look to my hair specifically, which I really love for just an effortless beachy look. So this is like my go-to summer hair right now since I cut it just because it's so easy to do and this just kind of makes my waves even more natural looking and shiny put together. So I really like this if you like this kind of wavy style. I would definitely recommend checking out this beach spray. Normally beach sprays leave that kind of crispy like a salt spray like the crispy sort of you don't want your hair to feel like this is softening so it leaves it super super soft which i love so definitely check this out if you like a soft wave one makeup fail that i had was the covergirl three-in-one foundation and i honestly hate to say that because i know so many people love it but as soon as i put it on my skin like my skin just went <laughs> It was so, so dry. I tried it on for my Try New Makeup video and I knew it was the wrong shade going in, but I just wanted to try the formula to see if I should go out and find my proper shade. And it was a no go. I tried it two times after that, had the same sort of effect on my skin. It almost made it feel like it was burning, like there's some kind of clay in there that I do not agree with. So I'm not <laughs> going to be using that again. Unfortunately, it didn't work out for me. As much as the formula was thin it was so drying and it ended up looking thick because it just sucked all the moisture out of my face I don't know how to describe it but it really didn't play nicely with my skin like I hated <laughs> that foundation and I don't think I've hated a foundation like that in a very long time like normally I can make most foundation work for me but that one did not work for my skin <laughs> so if you have similar skin type to me. Maybe pass on that one. It was just a little too heavy for my skin and definitely one that won't be in the rotation and I sent it back. One random lifestyle thing I wanted to talk about, which I'm so late to this, they're Apple iPods. iPods. <laughs> iPods, I'm very late. One lifestyle item I wanted to mention this time around are Apple AirPods. <laughs> I just recently got them. I absolutely love mine. I didn't know that you could get your text message through it. So when I have them on my ears, if I'm like cooking or cleaning or whatnot, I can still answer my text through these. I don't know how I didn't know about that, but it's come in so handy for me just during the day, doing my thing, getting things done and not having to reach for my phone. I can just answer text through my AirPods and it's just been working out so fantastically for me. I don't have to pick up my phone and do that. I can just continue doing what I'm doing. Plus it has great sound. I listen to music, podcasts, whatever. I just really love to have sound on, even if it's just one of these in my ears while I'm just getting things done. So that's why I wanted to mention these. I honestly wish I would have got them sooner if I would have known how useful they would have been to my daily life. I use them every single day and even my daughter, she's been using one and listening to music when I'm listening to, she loves them too, but I've just been having so much fun with those. And then I have two books I wanted to mention for this video and that's gonna be done for my June favorites. So the first book I finished and really enjoyed was Ariadne. It follows her and her story if you're familiar with the Minotaur and all that part of Greek mythology. I really enjoy Greek mythology and historical fiction in general. Like I really love that category for reads. And for Ariadne, I wouldn't say it's as good as Circe or even Song of Achilles because I love those two books so much, but this was definitely a solid four star read for me, which I would think you would enjoy if you do enjoy kind of Greek mythology and Circe in Song of Achilles. Good enough read for me to recommend, but definitely not as good as those two. <laughs> but if you like Greek mythology, maybe check out all those three books. Ariadne being my most recent read. And I'm currently finishing from Kate Quinn, The Rose Code, which looks like this. 
and I've been on the wait list at my public library forever to get this book and it finally came in and I have two weeks to read this. I'm almost done it. I honestly, that's all I want to do right now is just finish this book. <laughs> this book is based in the 1940s. It's during World War II and there's three women who are code breakers in this and it follows their lives. And I just think this is so interesting. And even though this is a pretty long book for me to read, it's over 600 pages. Normally I'm around like a three, 400 mark. This has caught my interest throughout. I have not lost interest in this at all. There's no slow parts for me. I just am really in this book and I cannot wait to finish it, but I already know it's gonna be a favorite. So if you have not heard about this book yet, I highly recommend checking it out. And if you're into historical fiction, like you're gonna love this, especially if you like The Nightingale by Chris and Hannah. If you're into that, you'll definitely love this book too. So I just had to mention those two books this time around. And that is everything for my June favorites and fails this month. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so, so much for watching. As always, if you have any product recommendations, lifestyle favorites, book recommendations, whatever you have, please let me know in the comment section below because I always love to check out your favorites too. It's nice to go there and see what you've been loving as well. If you have not subscribed already, I would love for you to do so by joining the family and hitting the red button. I'm just thinking about my intro and how I already did this. <laughs> If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe before you leave. Hit the bell if you want to be notified of all my future videos. And I will see you guys in my next one, hopefully. I have not scared you off.